Hi guys and welcome back to the third installment on the Honda TLR 200 Reflex project. Please check out our first and second video if you have not done so already to get up to speed with the progress we have made and where we're up to. Links for the last two videos will be in the description. For a quick rehash on our first video we had to do a bit of work to get the bike running. In our second video we had to do a all the work to get the bike ready for its first test ride. This included inspecting and cleaning the back brakes, inspecting wheel bearings, fitting a new tyre, re-tapping threads to fix a kickstarter, replacing the fuel line and tuning the carb and a host of other small jobs. We are picking off where we left off in the last video. We are going to do our best to get the TLR engine running and sounding better. We are also fixing parts of the bike to make it more rideable. So sit back, grab yourself a drink, and we'll get cracking. Alright, where to start? Um, what we'll do, we'll take the skid pan off. Uh, we'll dump the oil. Uh, we'll check out the oil strainer and clean it. Uh, there should be a little wire strainer in there. Uh, we'll remove the right hand crankcase. Uh, check for metal filings. Uh, we'll clean the rotor oil filter. Uh, we'll check for damage while we've got the case off. Uh, we'll take off the airbox and exhaust system. We'll try to uh, fix those carb issues. We'll just give it a clean and see if any jets are clogged up. We'll fit the new pod filter uh, eventually. Um, we'll have to ch uh, tune the bike once we've got that filter on there. Uh, we'll take off the front wheel and inspect the bearings, check for axle run out. Uh, so it's a you know a trials bike um, and check the brake shoes while we're there um, that should keep us busy for this video i think uh, but that exhaust system um, i might weld it up this video but uh, that might be on the next one the final one all right well um enjoy sit back and enjoy all right cheers Wasn't held on there by much. Just making sure that the O ring's still intact and can seal. I haven't come across any metal filings at all, so that's good. Uh, no damage. No metal filings or anything. I have to get a new gasket. She's rooted. There is filings in there.
it's all nice and clean now, so we'll go back together. This off now. All right, let's get rid of all this old gasket. Yeah, I've just got um underneath that that gasket and um. There's a lot of scrape marks, old scrape marks. You can see all the residue and stuff in it. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just get a stone on the uh, fine side and just lightly put no weight on it. Uh, getting all the high spots. We just keep it flat. You can actually do two sides, one here. Just get rid of the, the high spot. I could put it on the surface plate and give it a light sand, but I think it'll be fine. I'll try to explain this a bit better. The oil comes out through that hole, goes into this hole, back down through the case, back through here, into the valve. This is a, a rotor filter, centrifugal force, when this spins, throws the contaminants out to the side. And these are the it looks like silicon, but that's what coming out of the outside edges of the filter. So that's what you have to clean out. Alright, so I have to clean all this gasket up now. Just trying to put rag in here so when I scrape it doesn't go down and there's a bearing just here. You have to be careful that you don't dig right in it. You're just lightly scraping the, this gasket off. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of doing this, but I'm gonna use uh, some gasket maker, uh, the blue gasket maker. Um, this bike wasn't released in Australia, so I'm not gonna wait, you know, weeks and weeks. It might be the same as XR200, I'm not too sure, but I'm just gonna use this. I'll be careful with it especially around these areas where the oil comes back through um, but yeah I'm just going to put a thin layer on use one of my brushes and make sure it's nice and even well I've got all that back on didn't make too much of a mess of it I've just gone along and um, cleaned up most of the, the gasket what oozed out um, I'll clean all that off camera with a decompression lever that goes up to the head here um, I had to turn that to the left as I was putting the, the case on uh, to line it up. Uh, it flung out a few times and the spring come off so I had to rip it all back out again but it's all operational now. Uh, clutch is hooked up. Um, what I'm going to do now, I've noticed... I'll see if I with the camera. Zoom in a bit. I've noticed that this is out of alignment and the screw is a bit loose. I actually done that by hand. 
Um, so I think it's not butted up properly and that might give us extra length if you remember uh, down here where we had that big gaping hole. So someone's played with this. Uh, looks like they've painted the, the exhaust um, but yeah just sort of placed it in there and just done it up finger tight and it's off center. Um, so yeah I'll have a look at that, might need a new gasket in there too. This won't be helping the situation at all if I've got exhaust leaks everywhere, no air filter. What I'm going to do is just put a pod filter on the back of the carburetor. Uh, 38 mil, I think it was by my memory. Um, I'm going to keep the air box, but there's just too much sticking around. Also, I'd have to um, get parts from America, and um, you know, with this COVID situation, I don't know how long it'd be. Um, so, I can always get that later. And the pod filter was only shit, I think it was 15 bucks or something like that. So, um, stick that on there and I can always rip it off later but at least be able to churn it properly get those exhaust leaks sorted out that rear muffler is a shit fight there's holes everywhere on the inside on the outside of it so I might have to fabricate something up for that I've just turned the bike around to get um, access to the carby. Um, I've done that exhaust up and got it up nice and tight now, so I'm happy with that. Alright, so yeah, I've got the bike back in pieces again. I had to take off the tank and everything. I tried working on the carb, but it was impossible, so I've ripped it all to pieces again. I'm just going to clean the carby right out and just check every gasket. Uh, I'm going to clean out the jets and um, see if we can fix this uh, fuel problem where it just wants more fuel but yeah if that doesn't work well I'll just have to get another jet well hopefully you can see that try not to get my body in the road all the time but yeah. Mine looks pretty clear. I'll have to get my glasses on for that one. Well, that one's clogged up. Emulsion tube looks fine. I won't attack that, I'll just spray it through. Alright, this um, gasket here, it's hard as a rock, but hopefully it seals. Can't see it breaking away anywhere. Alright, I'll just give it a good clean out. Clean this with um, one of the oxyacetylene uh, files for the tips. I'll go with the smallest jet here. Shit, even that won't get through. Must be blocked right up. Try from the other side. I might just go see if I've got an O-ring uh, this size. This one just doesn't seem to fit in here, right? I think 
and someone's tried to put silicon behind it. I mean, all right, I'll just have a look. Perfect fit. Be even better once I dig out all this other crap what's behind it. Oh, that's good. All right, we'll go with that. Try to get as much of this silicon out as I possibly can. It's all stuck in there pretty well. I did spray it around the carb with um, Aero Start. It's a good way to see if you got air leaks. Like if the, the engine revs up, it's sucking in. More fuel with the aero start, and it shows where the uh, the leak is. But I sprayed all around, and I couldn't find any leaks. But it's not saying there there isn't a small one there somewhere. I think that's a lot better. Well, there's a little bit left there. I'll give it a good clean tomorrow. That bang, look at that. Awesome. Taking off the oil and everything just to get this out. Everything's such a bloody tight fit. It's ridiculous. Fucking drives me nuts. I don't know if you can. Oops. Yeah, look at that. Look at the holes in that. That's from that, um, no, all two rods. Took it on two rods and that just blew its bung all out. But even on the inside, she's totally screwed. So I don't know if I'm going to replace this piece and just weld it back in or do something else. But look at how thin that is there. Oh, that's a lot of restriction there. Probably all rooted anyway. But yeah, I could fix that, just weld something up. Alright, so if we get this bloody air box out, it's doing me head in. Alright, so I'm going to keep this in a box in case I ever do sell the bike. They can get it back to original, but I'm just going to put a pod filter on the back. That'll do, no. Alright, I'll. Shockies are back on. Right, that'll do me for the day. Oh well, I've got some goodies in the mail. Yeah, a little cheap uh, pod filter. It's a part number there. Right, I don't really like buying import stuff, but. Yeah, it's out of my hands in this one. Right, I'll just see if this fits. There you go. Pretty good. I'm putting uh, plastic underneath. I've already uh, glued a bit there, just on a few points. Um, because I got the, the rectifier, what it has to mount on because of the, the air box is gone. And also I don't want shit coming up under the, under the seat. So it's just a, you know, block it off, bit of thin plastic. 
All right, so I'll oil this filter up. I just put a bit of um, oil on this filter. Well, she's all back together. Just have to give it fresh oil now and um, start her up so she goes. Okay, let's get started on the front of the bike. We'll go over to the uh, CNC plasma table. We'll cut a stainless number plate for the front. I'll start jazzing it up a bit and get the get the bike looking good. Okay, we're over in the designer's edge software. We'll just get the rectangle square tool. I'll make a square two three zero. Just scale it. Do a fillet, eight millimeter fillet on all four corners. Now I'll get the cut path, I'll group these together, bring it down onto the plate. Uh, we'll just check the distance here from the other artwork I've already cut out. As long as I've got a couple of millimeters, yeah, that's fine. Uh, just check at the top there. It's grouped. We'll save it. Okay, we'll initialize. Excuse the noise in the background, but it's raining and uh, we need the rain at the moment because we're burning drought. But um, I've made the number plate as you've seen the other day on the CNC plasma cutter, the plasma cam. Uh, 3116 stainless steel, uh, 2 mil thick. Might be a bit over top for this, but it'll look good when it's finished. Um, I'm gonna, it's got three points of contact where I can bolt up to. It'll have to be, I'll have to make spaces in the lathe so I'll clear these bolts on the outside here. Um, but it should look good when it's finished. I'll have to get rid of all those scratches so I might just scotch bright it. So, you know, if you decide to paint it later I'll have a good key uh, for the paint to stick to or, you know, get a sticker on there or whatever. Um, so yeah, we'll get cracking onto that now. It's four, but the... these will be roughly six mil. I'll clean these threads out, especially this one down here. They had a, just a bloody metal tech screw in there, so they've rooted the threads a bit. Yeah, I'll pick that up, but yeah, so I'll have to re that. Uh, but yeah, okay, well, let's get cracking onto that. Alright, this is the worst one. They had like a bloody metal roof, roof and screw in here. Test out, so if find them out good enough. Yeah, 
That's good. This was the one to worry about early, but a little bit tight, but yeah, that'll go in there. Alright, that's that done. So I just want to measure the offset. That's I wonder if you can see that. That's um, about 12 mil for these two top ones, and 15 mil, I think. Yeah, 15 for the bottom one. Where I'll just cut them out on the live now. Now lock the title there. Okay, what we've got here is uh, the aluminium uh, spaces, aluminium spaces, uh, stainless steel hardware for the bolts, and I've got some brass washers from a previous project. So I'm just going to fit them under the bike now. Last one. There we go. Yeah, so I think it looks pretty good. That might wrap it up for this video. Um, the video is just getting too long. Um, but yeah, we've done a fair bit of work to it. On the last video, it might be the last video, I've got a new seat cover. So I fix this seat up. Uh, I got some closed cell uh, farm from a previous project, so we'll get that all done. Um, I've got a new carby coming. Uh, I'll just put that back on that. Um, but yeah, we'll take a few dents out of the tank and all that sort of stuff as well, um, and do the exhaust. Then she should be pretty much done. Then I'm sort of undecided if I'm going to, you know, pull the motor out. Spray the frame, spray the motor. Uh, we'll just see. 
see how things go. Alright, well thanks for watching and spending time in the shed with us. Uh, please like and su subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.